until now we have seen file exists file doesn't exist folder exists folder doesn't exist windows exists windows doesn't exist application running application not running now we will see is script successful and script unsuccessful for that before that let me go to my desktop there's a, you know two files that have been uh, created if you see there are two things one is vb script another one is javascript the script you can use any kind of javascript or the vb script that you can use it to check it out task uh, sorry script successful executor or not so let me explain you what are the things that I have done for the JavaScript. Let me go ahead, let me open hello world. It's a simple thing that script document.get element ID demo inner dot HTML equal to hello world. That I have given a simple thing. Let me go ahead, let me give the double quotes over here. And I'm going to saving it. I have already saved it. In the same way, by using VB script also, I have done the same hello world. Okay. Uh, if you want to see message box hello world that have been shown by VB script it's not a big one okay just to display on the screen kind of thing okay these are the two things that which we have which I have already created if you want also you can have any kind of VB scripts or JavaScript that you can keep ready with you okay now let me switch back to my automation anywhere enterprise client workbench let me disable all the commands for the time being because I don't want to run all these things. Let me go ahead, let me disable that. Okay, action list and I'm going to saving it. Now, if you see script successful, let me drag and drop this sub command onto my action list. Okay, if you see if script successful, then what? which script that have to be successful? Then I'm going to browsing it I'm going to on my desktop. If you see, there are the things that you can see file name. If you see, if you drop down the, uh, you know, what kind of thing that you can see all the VBS files or the JavaScript files. Now, first of all, I will show you the VB script. For the VB script, it is going to be select. Uh, I'm going to select hello world as I shown you, and then I'm not going to be passing any parameters over there, and I'm going to say save it, and then. I'm just saying, I'm just copying this thing, the message box, I'm going to pasting it, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm saying hello world that VB script executed successfully. Okay, I hope if else that you can say, you know, it is not executed successful by using script unsuccessful. I'm going to save it, saving the action list and then I'm going to running it. See, VB script executed successfully. Now, how can we say this script not executed successfully. Correct. I'm going to make a small modification over here. Uh, the same thing that I'm going to selecting it. If script unsuccessful, which script? This hello world script, then I'm going to say it, script not successful. not executed successfully. I'm going to save it. I'm just going to make a small uh, error over here into the in the particular script. What is the error that I'm going to modifying anything like that VB script correct. Now let me go ahead, let me edit it. And I'm saying some message box or some one value or something that I'm going to put it over here or before hello world, I'm going to make it. I'm going to save this script. Let me go back to my automation anywhere. Let me run this one. Now, if you see, there is error in the script, 1006 expected, there's an error. So I hope we have modified that, we have observed it. That's the reason it is showing as an error, right? It is showing an error over there. That's the reason 
uh, we can say script successful or script run successful by using this thing. In the same way, what we are going to do, I'm going to use the script successful, another one for the JavaScript. Let me go ahead, let me show you the JavaScript also. You can see JavaScript files. Let me select that, hello world, and I'm going to say, save it. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm keeping the same thing over here. I'm not commenting, uh, disabling the previous commands that you can see. Okay, this is the same errors that we can see. I have not given any kind of messages over here. Let me go ahead, let me give the messages also. I have not pasted any messages box over here. JavaScript executed successfully. If there is any errors, then automatically it will show there's an error, right? Now let me go ahead, let me run it. I hope there's an error in the hello world.js, but the context is the same that you know, you want to check it out if there is any VB script not executed successfully, this is the line number. And okay, there's an error in the JavaScript that's the reason it is not showing over here. But the context is the same, that you want to uh, execute the script is successful or not. If you want to check it out, you can go ahead and you can check it out the script by using script successful subcommand or script unsuccessful subcommands. Okay. I hope you understand it. Let me go ahead, let me disable it. Now, we'll see about the task. Task successful or unsuccessful. What is the task successful or unsuccessful? Performs an action based whether the task ran successfully or not. Using this condition, you can run several task logics or metabot logics, ensuring that each task runs successfully if the PS was successful. So what is the task that before going to be doing these things, what are the tasks that you can go ahead and you can do that? Where I can find this task? Okay, let me go to Automation Anywhere Enterprise Client. You can see these are all the tasks. Okay, now, you know, these tasks have been successfully uh, completed or not, this task has been uh, successful or not, you, can, you want to check it out, that based on that, you can go ahead and you can check it out. First of all, let me go ahead, let me locate which location that you have. Let me copy this. You can see all the tasks over here, right? Let me go back to my workbench. I'm drag and drop in task successful. Let me browse the file task file. You can see over here, uh, I'm having already in the place that you can see database command, first task, hello world, if else demo these things. Let me select hello world. So if it is a task successful, then you can say successful. If it is a task successfully running, then you can say task successful. And I'm going to saving it. Let me enable this thing. I'm, if you see this task hello world if bench is working uh, successful, this task is running successfully so that you can find it automatically this task has been successful. You can see the error, uh, the message hello world of the hello world bench that you can see over here. And you can see this is both the things, this task as well as the, this message, both are showing on. Let me show you once again. This hello world is showing hello world message as well as this message box. This is the message box task successful. That's the reason you can see two message boxes over here. One is hello world, this is the related to this task. Another one is the if else command that message box you can see, task successful. Okay, if it is a task not successful, then you can use task not successful. Okay, this is about the task successful or task not successful. Now let me go ahead and show you the ping successful or not successful. What is ping? So if you see there's the remote machines or machines or the servers, you want to check it out this is successfully working or not, then you can go ahead and you can say that. Where I can see these pings? I am going for the command or the particular system that I'm going for the IP config. So you can find the particular IP of the particular system, right? Now my system is 192.168.1.2. 
six that IP is based on the IP that we are checking out. So this is nothing but ping. Pinging of, you can see the ping of 192.168.1.6. These are the commands that you're going to be using that you know it is listening properly. Now you can see this is replying back that the main it is working fine because of this is my local system. If I'm going for the ping, I'm using some other 192.168.1.7 because that IP doesn't exist so that it is taking time and it is not replying that saying a destination unreachable or something and that's the reason it is failing. The same thing that I'm going to give it over here that you want to check it out ping successful or not. Okay, I hope you are getting it. This ping is the option that you want to check it out the remote uh, system or the remote machine, remote server is working fine or not. Now let me, uh, one second, let me go ahead, let me disable all the things. Now I'm going for the ping successful. I'm just giving the same IP 192.168.1.6. This is my IP of my machine. Okay, and I'm going to saving it. And I'm simply saying ping successful. If it is returning back, then you mean you can say ping successful. And I'm going to saving it. I'm enabling this one. Now let me go ahead, let me run it. So you can see ping successfully. Okay, it is the main, it is able to connect to this IP. Now let me show you ping unsuccessfully. I'm just giving some IP which doesn't exist 192.168.1.7, which, which is not connected. Let me give the message over here. Message box ping not successful. Let me go ahead, let me save it. Now let me run it again. The first one you can see as successful, another one you can see as message not successful. Both the things, correct? So the first one is successful, another one is not successful because that IP or the doesn't exist. Okay. I hope you understand ping successful and ping not successful. This is just to connect, to check it out whether the IP exists or not, the IP doesn't exist or not, or the servers are up and running or not. To these things that you want to check it out, you can use this ping successful or unsuccessful subcommands. Now, let me go ahead for the service running. Before that, what is service running? Where I can check it out, what kind of services that I can go ahead and I can check it out, service is running or not. Let me go to command and uh, run command, sorry. And you can see services.msc. So you can see there's a lot of services. You can see, sorry, all these things. You can see the status as running or not. The status is these things running or not. You can see all these things, correct? These are the things that you can check it out. Service is running or not. Let me go ahead. Let me drag and drop the service running. You can see select service over here. You can see all the services. What are the services that you have? Now we will take one of the best one over here. I don't want to mess up with any kind of thing, application identity. Let me check it out, application identity. If you see the application identity status is uh, not show, showing as null or not running, right? Now let me go ahead, let me select the application identity. Okay, now I'm just showing uh, a message box over here as service running. And I'm going to saving it and let me enable this. If you run this, this service is running? No. All right, let me show you that. Let me go ahead, let me run it. I don't want to show this. Uh, I uh, know as per my expectation, this message box won't show. Correct. Because of the service is not running. Let me drag and drop the service is not running also. 
okay the same thing what we are going to do application identity i'm going to saving it i'm copying the same thing message box showing service is not running okay let me go ahead let me save it let me uh, save it first and let me run it and if you see the reason is that service is not running what is the reason behind that the service is not running let me go ahead let me run it if it is able to i'm just clicking on start okay now if you see application identity where is that let me go ahead application identity is running now let me go ahead let me run the same task again or the workbench now what is the message it has to show the service is running correct these are all the things we can check it out uh, based on the service running we can check out the particular service is running or not in the next session we will see the remaining sub commands like variable file size file date web control image recognition windows control else if else end if commands these are all the sub commands we will see in the next session thank you for watching automation anywhere rpa tutorials if you have any queries related to this topic please post them in the comment section till then bye bye we'll see you in the next session